So good to have you. So good to have you. If you go to the book of Ephesians with me. We're going to try to go through this pretty quick tonight. Glory to God. I have a conference call that I had to get home to be a part of. So, and all of that good stuff. So, amen. If you would pray with me, Father, we thank you and we're blessing you on this night. This is the this is the day that we declare to be the national day of prayer in this nation. And Lord, we are going to believe you tonight that you are going to hear our prayers over this nation in Jesus name. Bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're changing the issues of this United States of America, that your presence, Lord, will hover over this land as you did over the deep. You said that the spirit of the Lord hovered over the spirit of the over the spirit of the deep over the waters and it divided the waters from the waters and so forth and so on. So, Lord, we thank you on this national day of prayer. Move upon the the nation move upon the nation and do an amazing mighty work in the United States of America Lord there are so many issues that we're facing right now in this nation unlike anything that we've ever seen before and so Lord we need you we need you we're desperate for you we're desperate for an outpouring of holy in the land in the name of Jesus. If you're joining us by way of live stream, begin to just pray over the nation. It's the national day of prayer. And we want to make sure that we uh, join in with all that has gone on today. Father, more and more has happened in the nation's capital, across the nation, and cities around in capitals and at city halls and everything. Lord, your believers have gathered and, and asked you to do amazing work in this land and so lord we're joining with those prayers we connect our hearts with those prayers in the name of the lord jesus and we ask you now to do work for us hallelujah lord also give us avenues that we can now function in that we can come and we can connect to and that we can be the the, the salt and the light of the world hallelujah that we can be those that you can send into to the harvest field that many can be saved lord we pray for the salvation of the generation hallelujah if people get saved the nation change lord as people change their hearts everything else around them change and so we're calling forth that change now in the name of jesus in the lives of people so lord we we and this house we pray from a priestly perspective we pray for family members lord we pray for friends we pray for our community we pray in the name of jesus for even strangers that we have never met we're asking you to do an amazing work in all of those and all of these people's lives change them god touch them redeem them bring them out of darkness in the way that you will in jesus mighty name thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord bless you father bless you father bless you father if you would just begin to open up your mouth with me and just begin to pray over the nation just call the nation bless it in jesus name come on if you're looking by way of live stream begin to just pray where you are call the nation bless it in the name of jesus glory to god glory to god hallelujah glory to god hallelujah glory to god bless the name of the lord why i destroy my might thank you jesus thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, just be, began to bless the name of the Lord. Lord, even with this, this, this leaked decision of the Supreme Court, let this not be a thing that can be used, O oh God, from the position of evil. But Lord, let the baby's lives be saved. Lord, this decision will save some children that, have, that would not have been saved. And we say amen to that in Jesus' name. We bless you for the sanctity of life in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bless you for that. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 
We give you honor and glory. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray over these cities, Lord, that are having major crime and murder happen in, their, in these cities. And Lord, we ask now, God, that murder and the deaf angel would move from these cities. And that men and women's lives would be saved and even children would be saved from murderous demons that take pleasure in taking life. Right now in the name of the Lord, we ask you, Lord, we ask you, God, to do a work for your, for your people. As we ask you, move for us, Lord. Mobilize your ecclesia. Mobilize the people that are part of the body of Christ in these cities. Mobilize them, oh God, that they would be now those that would move mightily and do work for you in the kingdom of God. And Lord, snatch people out of hell's gates. Yes, Lord. You said, Lord, you said clearly, you said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church shall not prevail and we declare now that we are taking ground yeah. take more and more ground so we pray in connection with the body of Christ and those that are a part of these cities Lord that the, the crime is raging yeah. we say now Lord quiet this Lord I've seen it with my own eyes when leaders come together and pray yeah. and cities change I've seen it I've been a part of it I know that it works oh God that crime rates will drop and every other type thing will change when the body of Christ decide to take ground. And so, Lord, we take ground tonight in Jesus' name. We take ground tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we take ground. Glory to God. We call out Chicago. We call out Memphis. Glory to God. We, we call out New York. We call out L.A. Yes. We call these cities out, these, these cities that are ravaged, yes. God, by crime, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do a work and, and increase in strengthen your body of Christ like never before. We ask you to do that. Before we finish, Lord, we also ask you to bless Charlotte. Yes. Where we are here in Charlotte, North Carolina, we ask, Lord, that our governance and all of that would be now blessed of the Lord. Yes. That the hand of God would be upon our governance in Jesus' name. And all of our legislators and all of our congressmen and all, God, let the blessing heaven, hand of heaven be upon them. Yes. On our mayor and on all those in the city council. Lord, we pray for the, for the commission city commissioners and all of those that are in authority. We pray for the sheriffs, the sheriff office and we pray for those in law enforcement in the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask now that the hand of God be on them because they are part of the city of Charlotte and we pray over this city on a regular basis and we declare the blessings of heaven on their lives. We ask you Lord that you would cause, your, cause them to see you in a way that they've never seen you before. That Lord they will open their eyes to you and they will walk in a newness and a fresh Many of them are a part of churches. So, Lord, as they are a part of churches, you find their hearts right there. Touch their lives right there. Cause them to be what you want them to be and to legislate and to govern from the perspective of heaven in Jesus' name. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We say yes and amen to it, Lord. We say yes, we say amen to it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the National Day of Prayer. In Jesus' name. And everybody said. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So we just wanted to have our, our two cents in there for yes. it's a national day of prayer. We want to have our two cents in there. Glory to God. Welcome live stream. We bless you. Welcome Facebook. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go to um, go to Ephesians, if you will. Um, the end of chapter one. Um, we we would like for you to go there. All right. Also, we would like um, put the the information about the app. In the, in the comments there is an app we would like for you to download and 
search for Bethel Outreach International Church and then you can actually join our online campuses there. You can literally be a part of the online campus that way too. And and as that as a result of that, um, um, and as a result of that, you will get more information from us through this particular app. And so if you would do that, as it's going to be in the comments, it's called Stack Team App. And so as you do that, you're going to you're going to enjoy um, further um, insights and understanding and further connection with um, us here at Bethel OIC. All right. So if you go with it, go to Ephesians with me. If you go to Ephesians with me, um, let's just start right here at Ephesians 1 and 15. Ephesians 1 and 15 says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Now, that was, that's a two-parter, isn't it? That's really nice. Faith in the Lord Jesus, and then to what? Love unto all the saints. That is a serious situation right there where you've got faith in Jesus first and out of that faith in Jesus, then you have what? This love towards the saints. It is, it is, is, is a, is a, well, and, and then if you also think about it, faith work by love. Is that right? Yes. Faith works by love. So faith work by love and so faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. And then Paul says this. He says, he says, since I heard of that, he says, now he said, I cease, he says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now I want you to think about that for a second because of where we've come from. Because we've come a long ways down in this and we haven't left chapter one yet. Um, it's a little chilly, ain't it? You chilly? You chilly? I know, I know. You chilly too? Okay. Go fix that for me. Can you fix that for me, Crystal? Okay. All right. All right. So what's happening is um, when you understand where Paul has come from and he really dealt with our relationship in Christ and how we're functioning in Christ and all that. Now he's dealing with from this point now what he's what he understands about this church and this church of Ephesus was an amazing church as well. And again, this book that's written to this church is one of the most spiritual books in your Bible. OK. Um, and so Paul is saying now, the reason why I'm, I gave you the information that I gave you before is because I've already heard about who you are. I heard about your faith in Christ. Okay, now, now again, I want you, I don't want, I don't want to just run past that because, you know, I've been doing these faith infusions on, on Facebook and I've, I've taken a week off from doing them, um, and nobody even recognized that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody even recognize it? You, you, you recognize it? You recognize where is, where is the next one, right? Okay. I took a week off and I, and I, um, so that people could catch up, okay? Because I'm so far ahead of them. I think it's 60 of them out there right now. So we did 60 days. And so, so the faith infusions, what it does is it talks to you about faith, talks to you about believing. So it's interesting. So when you think about faith in the Lord, okay, faith in the Lord. Paul says, I heard of your faith in the Lord. What did he hear? The question is, what did he hear about? What did he hear about? Did he hear about people that are saying, well, I trust God? Or did he hear about things actually happening? <laughs> that, that, that triggered him to go, wow, these people are, these people have faith in God. Okay? Now, um, while um, in early morning prayer, um, the Lord asked me a week ago, um, so he says, um, I want you to prove Matthew 18 and, and 18. He says, prove it. Prove that when two or more are gathered together in my name, I'm in the midst of you. Prove it. He says, make it, make it proof in your own life. That if, if, if you are praying together, then something happens. Okay? Because it's easy to say those scriptures and nothing happens. And you walk away like, okay, we did what we were supposed to do. Now it is on God. Okay, is that right? 
That's that's not. It. But he said, no, 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 no. I told you that if two are gathered in my name, I'm going to be there with you. Not only that, if you ask anything in my name, if you touch by asking anything in my name, Father will do it for you. He said, prove it. Prove it. Prove it. So we've been actually going after that on, in the early morning prayer time on the prayer call to literally say, God, if we're gathered up here five in the morning, <laughs> then we want to see the evidence of that. Yeah. Okay. You see, again, if you're not seeing any evidence, how are you saying it is true? Mm -hmm. Amen. When you think about that for a moment, yeah. you're literally dealing by theory. It's all theoretical. And, and theory can always be challenged. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. People can challenge theory. Uh -huh. They just can't challenge it when it actually happens. Yes. You can't challenge, again, and if you notice with the apostles, and again, I, I, we talked about that in, in the book of Acts, is that you, 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 you heal a man that's been crippled his whole life, I don't have to. I don't. I don't. I don't have to go there with a sermon. Uh -huh. The man becomes a sermon. Yes, you know, that's right. You see that? Yes. The man becomes a sermon, and now somebody want to know how did this happen? Well, let me give you an explanation of what happened, rather than trying to give you the explanation of what can happen before anything manifests. Yes. Are, are y'all with me here? Yes. See, we want to talk about Jesus, and and there is no evidence of Jesus. Yes. Preach, Bishop Jackson. Priest Bishop Jackson, you're doing a good job. Great job. Come on, are y'all with me? Yes. So the deal is, prove it. Prove that what is in the scripture is true. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 So Paul said he heard about their faith. They were, they were, things were happening amongst them. Things were happening amongst them that he heard about. And then he said, not only did I hear about your faith, I heard about your love unto all the saints. Oh man, this, this, this verse 14 is just, just powerful. Your love unto all the saints. Um, it was, it, it was, it was again common knowledge that in, in the first century as well that we already had the fact that everybody in the beginning of the gospel had sold everything and brought it and laid it at the apostles' feet. And that the people were being blessed and taken care of and everybody had everything common. So everything was equal. Now, you know, today that is somewhat impossible um, to do. Um, you know, because we're not paying all y'all rents and paying all y'all mortgages. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know, and the other part of that is you ain't going to bring me all your money and lay it at my feet. <laughs> You're not going to walk in and just drop your paycheck off every week and say, now take care of me. Come on, right? You See, that, that you know, it was, it was a much simpler time then that that could actually take place. And so they were able to do that. And so they, they, so they did so. So, but what I'm saying to you is they had developed a love with each other. They had developed a love for each other that supersedes a lot of time the love that we have in the church today. They literally had agape going on. Yes. Okay. And, um, um, and if you became or was a Christian, they treated you in such a way that you wanted to remain a Christian. Amen. You, you, you follow? Yes. You follow that? Yes. That's, that's good stuff right there. So Paul says, I heard of your faith. I, saw, I heard about what's going on amongst you. But in connection with that, I heard about your love to the, to the people of God and how you take care of each other and how you love on each other. Um, we, could learn, we could learn something vital from that. How to take care of each other. Amen. Amen. Then, he, then let me go back to where you were saying. He says, so when I heard about that, I ceased not to, I, I, I ceased not to give thanks for you I, I, and make mention of you in my prayer. So, 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 so again, verse, went back to verse 15 so I could get back here to verse 16. And I want you to think about it for a second. 
I don't want you to answer because um, it can be um, a little incriminating. Um, but I want you to think about how many days have you prayed for the saints of the house? How many days have you prayed for Bethel people? You see? You see? How many days have you literally focused your prayer time on the people of the house? How many times, come on, are you, are you thinking about that for a moment? Uh, again, I don't want you to answer. I want you just to think in your mind, okay, you know, really, have, if, if, have I really prayed for them? You see, I, you sit amongst one another, but how often are you calling names out or just praying in general over the house? And then literally calling out some people's names as God may bring them to you that you might even know they're having people having some issues in their life. But you just said, let me call these names out before the living God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I'm a part of the house. Right. Is that is that making any sense? Yes. Or you can say, based on what Paul is saying, you can say, Bishop Jackson, that's your job. You see, because Paul says he did it based on the fact that he was the overseer of the house or overseer of that church. But again, I'm giving you the love of all the saints. See, when you understand the love of all the saints, if I love you, I got to pray for you. You see what I'm saying? And and I'm praying for Paul said to also because it'll be easy for you to pray for me. You know, you think about me, Paul said, pray that I have an effectual door open unto me, that I might speak boldly as I ought to. And so Paul's asking for you to pray for him, and he asked the church to pray for him. You'll see that in Ephesians 6. But, but the deal is, how are we praying for each other? How are we standing together with the needs and the care and the, and the, and the relationships or, or the, the ministry areas that God has given all of us? How do we make that happen? Well, we're asking God as one to um, do this because everybody that's doing anything, everybody is doing it. Anybody that's doing anything, everybody is doing it. Let me say that to you again. Anybody that's doing anything, everybody is doing it. Okay, and many times that's not the way you think about it because we have these silos within the church. Using that loosely, that word, we have these silos, we have these individual groups. So I might pray for my group, but I ain't praying for everybody. But anybody that's doing anything, everybody is doing it. Okay, so if I'm going out to minister on the streets, you're not out there, but you're out there. Anybody that's doing anything, everybody's doing it. So when you find out I'm ministering on the streets, you immediately move into what? You're going to cover me. Why? Because you, because you would want cover if you were out there. So you treat me, you treat anybody like, wow, this, that's me out there. I'm actually doing that so I, I know I need cover yeah. amen yeah. Uh, is that making any sense yes, sir. and then you find then you even go further in that you go okay um, are there any resources not just money but any resources that are needed for that person to do that better yes. because anybody that's doing anything everybody's doing it yeah. that's called ecclesia and that's called the assembly. That's not called gathering only. That's called the assembly. And when you are assembled, now the whole thing works together as one. Okay? You see? Um, when you just think about for a moment, um, and many of these things have changed too, but not, not so far away from where I'm thinking. Um, if you go into a bedroom and there is a piece of furniture that's sitting in the middle of that room, most likely you call it a what? You go into a bedroom and there's a piece of furniture sitting in the middle of the, fl um, sitting in the floor, what do you call it? Bed. There you go, y'all. Y'all sleep on those? Yep. Yeah, they're called beds. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're called beds. Y'all you, you, sleep, y'all do, y'all in a bedroom. Y'all have beds in y'all bedrooms? Y'all do? Yes. Okay, piece of furniture. That's a furniture, isn't it? Yes. 
Okay, so in the front of you, okay, I thought y'all 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 was looking for something spiritual, weren't you? <laughs> y'all are all spiritual, right? Something I said in the bedroom, a piece of furniture. All right. So now, if that is the case, you called it a what? I can hear you called it a what? Okay. Now, how many parts are connected to that? We well, got a what? Yeah. Again, again, I told you these things have changed. So, but most you got a what? You got a head boy. Come on. Huh? You got a what? You got a foot boy. You got a box spring. You got a mattress. You got rails. You got slacks. Wow. So you didn't walk in the room and go, there's a headboard, a box spring, a sack. You didn't say that, did you? you what did you say? It became a bed because it was assembled. But if you ride down the street and somebody had on the side of the road the, the headboard, you would go, somebody left a headboard out here. You wouldn't say somebody left a bed out there, would you? Because now that's an individual part. Are you with me? Of the bed. When you deal with assembly, now anything that happens, you said, who put that on the bed? We need to change, change the sheets on the bed. You see? You now have now dealing with this holistically rather than with the individual parts. When you come into church settings, most churches have all these individual parts. So you've got men's ministry, women's ministry, children's ministry. But anybody that's doing anything in the kingdom, everybody's doing it. So therefore, if you don't have just children's ministry, come on, come on. You have ministry. Yes. 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 You see that? Yes. Now, all of those div- individual parts that we talked about, they are supporting one another, aren't they? Yes. Because you would not want to get in that, what you call a bed, and that headboard and footboard ain't together. <laughs> Somebody might hit the ground. Yep. All right, right? Yes, all right? Or the, or the rails are not in right. Yeah, yeah them rails not in there. That ain't no good day, is it, mother? No. On the flow. <laughs> and, and stay right there, not even get up either. I'll fix it in the morning, right? All right. So that's the place you got to come to. Are you with me? Paul said that's what he's praying for. Look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Okay. Come on. He says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, he's getting ready to tell you something, may give unto you what? Sophia, the spirit of Sophia, right? The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of what? Revelation. That means to make something known in the knowledge of him. He says, he says, this is what I'm praying for you. This is an amazing prayer, guys. He said, what I'm praying for you, I'm praying first of all. He said, I'm, I'm giving thanks for you because I'm making mention in your prayer because I've heard of your faith and I've heard of your love to the saints. So I'm, I'm giving God thanks for you. Again, so, man, I'm going away and having to come back. All right. So when you're in your prayer time over the body, when you're in your prayer time over the body, one of the first places you want to start is Thanksgiving. Okay, yes. you want to give God thanks for the folk you're connected to, because again, you are you are a symbol. So I thank God for this house. I thank God for these people. I thank God for the for all that you're doing in their lives and all that they are learning and the blessings of heaven upon it. God, I thank you so much that I'm a part of these people. You want to start with that level of thanksgiving before you ask for anything. Okay, because what we learn is Thanksgiving is the season, uh, amen, to your prayers, right? Okay, the season to your prayer is Thanksgiving. Come on, with prayer and let your requests be made known unto God. With prayer and Thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That's what you got to do. Okay, so... He says now, he says, and then I'm praying that, that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Yeah, we got you. We understand, man. Wow. 
may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. That you need to now function in this level of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Father. In the knowledge of the Father. Paul is saying that you now need to have this knowledge of God. This knowledge of God. When you understand this knowledge of God, then you're going to move in a new a new place. And that's what he's going to pray next. You're going to you're going to move in this new and living way that we already have looked at. But he says that the eyes of your understanding. This is wow. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, um, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And here we have come back to this inheritance thing. But before we get there, he said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Now, this is basically saying, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is to get you to the point that you are seeing at another level. He's called, he said that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. He said, I'm, I want you to increase in the knowledge and the revelation of God. And from that place that you will see at the level that God wants you to see. Now, most of us are seeing at our level. Okay, are you with me? Most of us are seeing at our level, but there are levels of, of, ahead of us, uh, above us. Are y'all got that? Now, yeah. Um, I've talked to you about this but I don't want to go too deep into it tonight I talked to you about there are so many other dimensions Paul talks about the four different dimensions he's going to get to that um, there are four dimensions and we even see we, we deal with time as one of those okay we deal with time as one of those dimensions. Okay, now, I will say to you, interesting enough, that time may not even be one of those dimensions, and time could be also what you could consider somewhat of an illusion, but it came into play at the moment that Adam sinned. Mm -hmm. Remember, if Adam doesn't sin, there are no, there is never a clock on the wall. Right. Wow. Amen. There's no need for a clock. Yes. Okay, there's no need for a watch. <laughs> there, there is nothing such as time. <laughs> I want you to meditate on that for a moment. That's something, isn't it? Wow. There is no, there is no time if Adam doesn't sin. So there is a dimension that Adam was living in that he fell from. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Come on, sir. You see that? Yes. He fell from that dimension into a dimension of time. Yes. We know he's in time because now death comes. Yes. Because death is a product of time now, right? Yes. Okay. And again, we know the dash, your birthday, your death date, right? Yes. That's what we put on your tombstone. When you came, when you left. <laughs> And the dash is all you did in between. Yes. <laughs> right? When you came, when you left, dash. Everybody get the same dash too. Yes. Do nobody get no real long dash. <laughs> Come on, isn't that right? And nobody. Everybody get a little teeny dash. Just a little teeny dash. Just a little. Everybody get the same size dash. I don't care how long you live, your dash is the same. Ain't that right? Okay, so when you understand that Adam fell from a dimension where there was no time. Adam communicated with God in a dimension where there was no time. Because God is not in, in time. God is outside of time. So if God is outside of time, there is a dimension above time. Did you hear me? That Adam lived in and then he fell into this dimension that we now call time. Space-time continuum. Yes. Wow. Paul says, I want your understanding to be enlightened. That you will know the Father. I want wisdom and understanding. I want wisdom and revelation to come in the knowledge of God. In order to do that. And then I want your understanding to be enlightened. I need your understanding to be enlightened. That you will now be able to function and understand what's beyond 
where you are. Yes. Amen. You tend to, you say you do it. You say, because we, we, we just mentioned Paul praying. See, again, I'm trying to shift your reality, shift your mind to the point that because you can pray in time. Yes. Did you hear what I just told you? Yes. You can pray in time or you can pray beyond time. Yes. Mm. How do you pray beyond time? You got to get you got to get out of the time mindset. Are y'all here with me? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, um, when I as I grew up, my father, my father is and still is. My father um, is a pastor um, in Church of God in Christ. Church of God in Christ used to not know what time was. They had no concept of time. You go to church in the morning, you leave it dark. <laughs> YPWW, YP, all that we had. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think Burl know a little bit about it. You know a little bit about it. You know a little bit, of, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. Look, you go early in the morning. You better take a lunch. Yes, but not only that, they didn't have to take no lunch because they're gonna feed you. Yes. Because there was some food down there. Come on, there's some food down there in the basement. They've been cooking down there all day. So when that first service over, you go on downstairs get you a plate, and then come back up to the next part. You don't get to go home. The children, children having a fit. Like when do we get to get out of here? You don't get to get out of here. We got to go to the evening service. Oh my God, it's all day. So, so they had the mentality. They had tried to. They tried to grasp the mentality that we're going to function beyond this time thing. But everybody still was stuck in it because they still knew how long they had been there. Okay, Paul says. Paul is saying you know, your understanding can be enlightened so that you can function from the position that the angels are functioning and from the position that God is functioning. Because that's where Adam was. Yes. Remember Jesus says something. Jesus says, all, all authority has been given to me. Where? Where was it given to him? Heaven and which one has which one has time? Earth. So he says, I've got authority in the time dimension, but I also have authority beyond time. Come on. Remember the Bible says that he's the same. Yes. Yesterday, come on. And now all that has to do with time. All that has to do with time. But, <laughs> but God is a God that was, is, see God, the only time you deal with time with God is, is. He was a God before time. He's a God that is in time. He's a God that shall be after time. Revelations. Jesus same day, yesterday, day. Now he goes into the out beyond time. Two parts of Jesus is in time. Yesterday and today. Go to God and then forever. Yeah, uh, beyond time. Are y'all tracking? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yeah. So now, how do I get to this place? Paul says that the Holy Spirit helps your understanding so that you speak beyond time. So I asked you, and Mother said, don't nobody ask those kind of questions. You know, can you, can you run a world? Okay. And now I can ask you, how do you live beyond time? Holy Spirit has to help you to know how to live beyond time. So that you're communicating with a God. You say you communicate with a God that's outside of time. Is that right? You, 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 you don't want God to come in your boat, do you? You, you go and meet him, don't you? Come on, somebody. So if that is the case, Paul says, 
Paul says that I want your understanding to be enlightened. I want your understanding to be enlightened. Because we'll get ahead somewhere. This is serious here. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. He said you find the hope of his calling by being enlightened. And he says in the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Wow. Now we're back to that word again. We're back to that word of the inheritance. We're back to the inheritance. Paul says you now. Now look at what it says. Because you could miss it. And I, we've been talking about the inheritance. It says the inheritance of what? What did he say? The inheritance of what? In the saints. Where's the inheritance? In the I can't hear you. Where, where, it said in the saints. the saints. Wow. He said the inheritance is in you. Wow. God has put his inheritance in you? How do you know that? He told you that in verse 14. Didn't he tell you that? Let's go back up. Let's go back up. Actually, didn't he tell you that? Let's go back to verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, he's talking about, come on, he's talking about Christ, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after you believed, you were sealed with what? That Holy Spirit of promise, which is the what? With the, which is the earnest of your until until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory so what is the inheritance in the saints yes ma'am is the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit is the inheritance that's in the saints and he's told you just though he just only gave you a down payment on it the earnest of the inheritance that's what he told you in verse 14 there is a down payment of the inheritance which is the Holy Ghost so then there's more to the inheritance but the inheritance is in the saints Amen. now wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute it's just too much Paul you're just too much here you telling me that you have given to me a treasure chest of what I'm going to ultimately get. You gave me a part of what I'm going to ultimately get. Why I'm not accessing it? <laughs> Why am I not accessing the inheritance that's in? Hello? You say, tell me, right? You have to seek the Lord more. You have to seek the Lord more? I agree with that. Yes. I'm going give to you, give you something to do practically that's going to help you even more. I told you, <laughs> I told you when you were colonized, remember? I said when you were colonized, I said the, what is changed? One of the main things that's changed. Say it loud. What is it? Your oh, your language has changed. Your language has changed. Your language has changed. Now watch. <laughs> Live stream. You listen to this. You're still talking the same. You're still talking like you're from earth. You're still talking like you're bound to time. You're not talking like you're from heaven. Mm. You haven't changed your language. Come on. Wow. So therefore, you can't even understand the fact that you have this inheritance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, let's try this. Let's, 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 let's riddle me this, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> let's try this. Bill Gates give away a lot of money. He decides and find out about you. And he gives you $30 million. <laughs> Which is front pocket money for him. That's front pocket. He ain't have to reach for his wallet. $30 million. He ain't got to reach for his wallet. That's front pocket. He walking around with that. He pulling that out of the front pocket. See? 
Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, the front pocket money is the money that's closest to you. Did you know that? Did you hear what I just told you? Front pocket money, you got it with you. You might have a whole bunch of money, but it's in the bank or somewhere else. You can't get to it. But the front pocket money, you reach for it, right? Okay. That's that's what that's how God sees us too. We his front pocket money. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. We we God front pocket money. We are his pur- we his purchase possession. We his front pocket. He can get to us right away. He can use us. He can use us right away. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Okay. Now. So now, watch this. Once you hit, get this now. You're not talking right. You're not talking like you're supposed to. But you got 30 million. Let me ask you something. You think your language is going to change? Yes. You got 30 million. You know it's yours. Your language, your language is going to change? Tell me how it's going to change. Talk to me real quick. How your language is going to change? How your language is going to change? Talk to me. By the things you buy, you're going to, but okay. Any more problems in your life much? No. Oh, you're going to let a lot of people know you got it? No. You're not going to let them know you got it? No. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't going to let nobody know. Live stream, I got a bunch of stingy Christians in the house. I got a whole bunch of them in the house. It's a whole bunch. Y'all can't see them because the cameras is set so you can't see them. But I'm telling you, there's a whole bunch of stingy Christians up in here. They're going to hide the money now. They ain't going to act like they got none of the money. Now, I'm going to know you got some of the money, mother, when you drive up here in the, in the bins. I, yeah, yeah. And, when I, and I can't catch you going down the street because you... Cause that, see that? See that lady? She, she fast. I, I put on a drag race with any of y'all. Okay, okay. So the trust is pretty fast too, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but Mother Barbara got it. She got lead in her feet. Yeah, that's why she don't do no dancing over there. She can't pick it up. She be moving their upper body, but she don't. She can't pick them feet up because that is is lead in them. Yeah, one of them feet. I'm just telling you, I tried to catch you one day, I couldn't catch you. I, just, I said, she gone, my God. <laughs> so, you haven't changed your language. You would not say what you're saying about a whole lot of things you deal with. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I, I, can't, I can't afford it. A whole lot of things in your life would just be gone. Yeah, I, you know, I, you know, somebody I, I need help. You, you, you go. You, what do you need? I, I can help you. What do you need? Well, I can't. I, you know, I need a thousand dollars. That ain't now. That's front pocket money. Thirty million in, in the bank account. I got front pocket money. A thousand dollars. I can get that. I don't even. I don't even know it's gone. Come on, are you with me? Yes. Are you understanding? Your language change. Your whole language change. Your language change. If you have an inheritance from heaven, how are you saying the same things? And 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 I wrote something in in some of the up, in one of my upcoming infusions of faith when I restart. Okay. And again, I'm letting people catch up because I knew I was so far ahead of them. And, and I could see where they were commenting from. I said, y'all way back. I'm going to wait on you. But I haven't stopped writing. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to post them in a minute. But one of the things I said in there is, if, that is the, if, if, if this thing is real, and if this is the case, then I need to be able to, okay, I need to be able to function from this place of faith that God has said that I had. I got to be able to function from this place of the inheritance that God says I had. Yes. It cannot be theory. Mm-hmm. It's got to be real. Yes. And listen to me close. Listen to me close. This is a key. You want to write this down. You want to write this down. Live stream, you want to write this down. <laughs> I just told Pastor Blue this the other day. It, it shook his world. He said, man, come on. Look, I want you to write this down. 
First of all, I almost want to take you over there. Romans 10, 9 and 10. And you don't have to go. You write it down. Write down Romans 10, 9 and 10. Go over there and check it out later. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It tells you how to get saved. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. But it gives you an order of salvation. Mm. It says, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Guess what? You turn that around. And the reason why things aren't working for you is because you turned that around. You're trying to believe before you confess. Hello, somebody. I said, you're trying to believe before you confess. So you're trying to get it, and I'm going to believe it before I say it. Come on, am I talking to the right Christians? Yes. Is that true? Yes, sir. Come on, I'm not, I don't want to be lying on you, but is that is that true? You're trying to believe it, and then I can say it. Yeah. That's not what that's not what you did to get saved. Because when you got saved, you didn't believe you didn't believe nothing. <laughs> you didn't know what to believe exactly. Somebody led you to Christ. They said, "Pray this prayer after me." Yes. Come on, is that right? Yeah. Come on, they come on. They led you in a confession. Yeah. Come on, hello. And your heart caught up later. Yes. Yes. That's right. Is that right? Yes. They led you in a confession. So you said something beyond your mind and your heart to believe it. Yeah. But you said, I, I received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that what he did on the cross is for me. The person was leading you to the Lord. And you said, I'm, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm redeemed. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm free. In Jesus' name, I'm free. I'm Jesus' name, I'm free. Now, you, you believe that much later, I promise you that. But right there at that point, when you made that confession, you were saved. Yes. Hello? Yes. The old man was taken out, the new man was put in so that you could believe. Right. The process of salvation is the process of life. Yeah. I'm telling you some stuff, man. The just shall live by faith. By faith. Live is the, is, the, is the optimal thing that you're going to understand. The just shall live. The just shall live. You got to understand, how would I live? It's going to be by faith. How, would I be by, how do I do that? Confess. See, that's why the, that's why when the whole faith doctrine came out, everybody was talking about name it and claim it. That's why they did that, because confession is first. Before your heart can get there, a lot of times you got to say it. You got to say it and you don't believe it at all yet. Y'all ain't hearing me. Yes, sir. You got you to gotta say, I'm healed, and you just had a pain. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. You got to say, I'm healed, and my knee just start hurting again. And I can't hardly move the thing. But I'm healed in Jesus' name. I am healed. I know this thing is gone. I am healed. I am not going to be under this. I am healed. Lord, I'm healed. Because you sent your word to heal me. You sent your word. You he- I'm healed. I don't care what I just felt. I don't care what I just saw. I'm healed. I don't care what I'm just dealing with. I don't care what the doctor just said. Every man is a liar. But let the word of God be true. I'm healed. I'm saying the word of God. Come on, y'all with me? And all of a sudden, in that healing confession, you believe it. Ah, Man, that was worth you coming tonight. Yes, Lord. Your inheritance changes your language. Holy Ghost changes your language. You have been you have been blessed abundantly. You are you are you are richer than Bill Gates and anybody you can think. Elon Musk, none of them can come close to you in your wealth. But you won't you won't believe it because you won't say it. <laughs> you won't say I'm richer than Elon Musk. Because you're looking from a position of time. And you haven't moved beyond time. Listen to me. Now, the last thing that... I, will I ever get out of chapter one? I'm still... <laughs> you see? It's all right. Just stay in chapter one. Oh, my Lord. And I had... But I had all these notes also. I had all these notes for chapter two. And I left them right on my desk. And I came over and I left from all the notes for chapter 2. I wasn't supposed to preach them. Okay, all right. Yeah, I'm not sending my notes out. 
So, so watch now, because we're not finished with this. He came to change your language. So what did he bring? What did the inheritance, what is the down payment on the inheritance, which is the Holy Ghost, what did he bring? What was the evidence of him coming? He changed the language. He changed language. What language, what did he, what did he bring then? A new language. What did you call it? You speak in tongues. You call it tongues. Okay? You know why you call it tongues? You don't know what else to call it. You don't know what language to put on it. No. You don't know what it is. You don't know what language it is, so you just call it tongues. Yes. But tongues, tongue, every language is tongues. <laughs> Come on, you say every language is tongues. Yes. Yeah. So again, if I listen to somebody speaking in, speaking um, Chinese, it's tongues. Yes. Japanese tongues. <laughs> French for me. Unless you're just saying C. <laughs> C, C, C. I got you there. Huh? That's Spanish. I see I ain't even got that right. <laughs> what is what is friend? We. I know. We see, we see. <laughs> we see. Yes, yes. <laughs> We see. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> see? Help me, Lord. Help me, God. Is this making any sense? Yes. Not my not my tongues, but everything else makes sense. <laughs> but every language is tongues. But you don't know what that language is that came from heaven. You don't you can't you can't put no name on it. So all you can do is call it the heavenly language. So many times when I tell people to pray, I say pray in your heavenly language. I don't say pray in tongues. Because every language is tongues. <laughs> That's not a language that you know it is not tongues. You use your tongue to speak it. <laughs> Hello, amen? amen? All right, so speaking your heavenly language. So the Holy Spirit has brought you your heavenly language. So now listen to me close. Listen to me close. The reason why you are staying in time is because the Holy, you're not, you're not praying in your heavenly language enough. The reason why you're still speaking the wrong, the wrong thing when you speak your earthly tongue and you're saying the wrong thing is because you're not praying in your heavenly language enough. What did, what, what did you tell you? When you pray in an unknown language or tongue, right? What are you doing? You're building up yourself on your most holy what? Faith. Okay, hey, what? Faith. Faith. Look at that. <laughs> and the just shall live. Faith. Oh my God. The just shall live by faith? Praying in, praying in my heavenly language build me up on my most holy faith? So the faith is taking me beyond the earth realm so that I'm enlightened to know God matter of fact the Bible says also Paul will talk about we will never get there <laughs> it'll be you know the, 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 the Lord will be back before we get there but in Romans <laughs> in Romans chapter 8 Paul definitely says that the, that the spirit knows the mind of God yeah, yeah. is that right he says, he says he knows the, he knows the mind of God. The spirit knows the mind of God. So if that is the case, then now how will I get to know God? How, what's the knowledge of God? Mm, praying in my heavenly language, letting the Holy Spirit reveal to me who God is, building myself on my holy faith. Now I speak in the natural realm that that has happened in my heart from the spiritual realm. Mm, that's good. Are you hearing me? 
See, most people, again, so, so he says, I don't feel like it. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Oh, no. Feeling ain't got nothing to do with it. Feel don't have nothing to do with it. I'm telling you, your words have everything to do with your living. Wow. Your words has everything to do with your enlightenment. The things that are, okay, the things that are, um, watch, I'm going to show you something. And this is for somebody, um, I think. Somebody is watching. Um, if you are dealing with a situation with a person, if you declare and began to declare, watch this, I will never see that person again in life. I want you to, uh, listen, let me tell you something. You, your words literally can control everything about your world. Yes. Yes. How do I know that? Yes. In the beginning was the word. That, stop, stop. Don't even go no further. In the beginning was the word. Yes. And the word was God. Wow. Mm -hmm. So and we know that God spoke in everything. So everything works by words. Yes. Which is why God brought you another language. Because the language you were speaking was defiled. Yes. Wow. Hey Amen. That's good. So the down payment on your inheritance is so that you speak a new language so you can communicate with heaven at the level of heaven's re um, um, requirements. Heaven do not like anything negative. Hello. So you're now dealing with heaven. So you said, I will never see that person again. That person will not be a part of my life and in my sphere of influence that we will not even cross paths. Mm. Let me ask you, let me ask you something for a second. Let me ask you something. Have you, have you ever had that in your life? Have you ever had somebody in your life that you saw all on a regular and then all of a sudden, and, you, and, and, and right now you haven't seen that person in years? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Anybody? You see the person on a regular. Now you haven't seen them in years. Yes. And they didn't necessarily move out of your city. They're still here. How did that happen? You, you're in the same circle for the longest. Guess what? Some kind of way, your words or their words oh. took them out of the circle. Wow. Y'all ain't gonna hear me. Wow. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And now you 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 don't even you don't even run across one another. You don't even you don't even see the other by chance. And when you do see, if you do see it, you go like, "Wow, woo! Fancy seeing you. I ain't seen you in a long time." And then you don't see him again. Come on, right? It's like your circles came close to one another, so y'all at least view each other from a distance. And then you go, shoo, gone again. Why? It's the words you speaking. See, right? Come on. Come on. Come on. That's Chris Tucker talking about. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? No, he didn't understand the words. Come on. Come on. Are y'all with me? Are y'all got you gotta get this. So my time's up. God, 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 God. Okay, so but but watch this. Listen to me close. Listen to me close. Well, listen to me close. I have a conference call I got to get to. It's a bishop's call, and y'all can't keep me. I ain't going to get me to lose my bishop's title. <laughs> Not tonight. But look at the next verse. Though the inheritance is in you, you got to begin to speak from the place of the inheritance, right? Yes. And uh, you're going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, I, I Listen, you got to pray in, the, in your heavenly language. Listen, let me, let me tell you. The truth of the matter is, where you want to get to, you want an hour. I'm talking about uninterrupted hour. I'm not talking about, I ain't talking about an hour going around doing other stuff while you're doing it. I'm talking about a sit down total hour of praying by the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Yes, Notebook in hand. So that as revelation flow, you writing down a revelation, but for a whole complete hour. I guarantee you, this is what I'm going to guarantee you. I'm not going to even give you, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to even tell you how long, I'm, a, I'm a, a long time. I'm telling you this. After 10 days, if you do 10 days straight, you won't recognize yourself. 
You got to realize that's 10 hours praying in your heavenly language. I guarantee you after 10 days, you will not recognize yourself. You'll go, oh my God, who am I? And how did I get here? It will be, a, I guarantee you, it will be a landmark situation in your life. And I also do guarantee you that some of the things that you're dealing with in your life will totally break off of you. I'm only giving you 10 hours. So what do you think will happen after 20 hours? And what do you think will happen after one month? One month of you praying in the Holy Ghost for an hour. Glory to God. You think about that. 31 days, you got 31 hours of praying in the Holy Ghost. You're, come on. Guarantee you there's a newness that's going to break forth in you. You try. Try me. See me. See if it's real. Yes. Ephesians 1 and 19 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us with who believe? According to the working of his mighty power. Man, I do not have time. I will not even think about it. <laughs> I will not even think about going there. It's just so much in that. He, ah! Because he's getting ready to tell you. That the same power that got Jesus up is the power inside of you. And we got to deal with, and, ah, okay, I'm not going to do that. You got enough for the night, amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. All right. So, Father, we bless you and thank you and for the word of God tonight. And to your word, we say yes. Yes. And to your word, we say amen. Amen. And we will function in your way, in your word, forever and ever. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, so live stream, we ask you to go out and download and we put in the comment section the, the Stack Team app. You can download that app. Look for Bethel Outreach International Church or BOIC, either one. You'll find us. You can then be a part of... That, that team community, you would join the online church campus or online campus. And when you join there, we'll be able to discuss and talk to you and tell you things. And you'll be able to discuss and talk to us um, in ways that you can't do right now directly to us. OK, so you don't want to join the general. You don't want to join all the ministries in the house and all that kind of stuff. OK, you don't want to do all that now. I'll tell the men, you could if you want to though, you literally men, you could join the frontliners. You could also join the frontliners team so that you know what's going on with frontliners. But that is probably as far as you want to go. Okay? All right? Because true value is not a part of our house, but frontliners is. So God bless you. Please download the stack team app is in the comments so go out there and click on that and download that app and join us and be a part we will i will know because my phone goes off every time somebody joins so if you do what we tell you if you're a part of this church and you have not done that you need to do that as well download the app and you then join general membership you will join general membership and then all the auxiliaries that you are a part of you can also join those as well so that we can can communicate with you on a regular basis so if you haven't been in the house this is a great opportunity for you to get reconnected to the house in a way that we can communicate with you on a regular basis so please do that god bless you have a great one we love you bye, -bye.